You can do it horizontal. You can put the, put the window down on the bottom anywhere. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do is create a new variable. Hopefully things will work better on this one here. Okay. I'm going to come over here, new variable, and then it gives me my data types of what type of variable that I want to add. Okay. If you look over there, you'll see the data types. Okay. And you've got Boolean up at the top. Int is integer. Okay. To 16 bits. D int is a double integer. Okay. Then you work down there a U int. That's an unsigned integer for an unsigned number. Then you have bytes, words, and double words. A byte is 8 bits, just some random 8 bits that's not represented as an integer. Okay. You've got words, 16 bits. D word would be 32 bits. Okay. Then if we're here, you have floating point. Reels and long reels. Okay. Those are numbers that are represented in scientific notation. 5 times 10 to the 89th. 89 is a bit bigger than what we can go here, but you can uh, get the idea what you've got. You can do really large numbers and really small numbers there. And you have strings that you can put in there also. Okay? And we won't go into these right now. These are enumerated function blocks. But for the most part, you will be using everything from Boolean down to string here. These are different data types, ways to store information in the computer. Donald, question? No. Nope. Okay. 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 All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new output. Okay? It's called a motor on output. Okay? So I'm going to select the Boolean data type. And I'm going to type the name motor on. Okay? Now I'm going to right click on it and get the properties. And notice over here that the reference address, okay, the reference address is in yellow. Alright? It's kind of hard to see. But right there, reference address, REF address. That tells you where in the PLC this is located. If you know where it's located, you can just type it in. Percent Q0004. Okay? Prophecy allows you to do a shorthand if you know it's Q4 or Q5 or Q6. Rather than doing the percent Q and all of that, I can do something as easy as type 4Q, tab, and it'll fill it in for me. Okay? Let me show you. I can type percent Q0004. Okay? And what did it pop up? I just got a message there. Okay? Little message there. What's that say? So I can't have two different things driving the same output. Won't like that, does it? Okay? So let me come back over there. And I'll show you the other way of entering it in. And I say, okay. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to try it again. 5Q. You notice I do it a little differently this time? And now it filled it out for me. It was happy. I didn't have anything to find at 5Q. If you don't know the address, to find it for you? I'll show you that next. Okay? So if you're not sure on the address, okay? You should have done this at definition time. Okay? You should have, this is part of what you would do at definition time. I know that that wire for that output is connected up to Q5 because I put that wire on Q5. Okay? But you come over here, you click this. Say, okay, let me click on this. Memory area. Make sure I get this on the screen here. This is going to pop up, and you've got memory area. You've got I, are your discrete inputs that's connected to the PLC. Q, 
are your outputs. You've got T, which are temporary, M, which are memory coils inside the PLC. M is the same thing as a relay with contacts, but those contacts just don't connect to the outside world. So if, on your PLCs, you've got six output relays, but you have an almost unlimited number of internal relays that you can use. Those are the M, or memory, discrete internal, internal bits. They're called a lot of different things. Memory bits, internal bits, internal relays. Okay? So we're going to go over here and we're going to select a discrete output. Now, because I did a Q5 already, it skipped over it and it showed me that my next available bit is Q6. Let me show you. This right here? The whole window. The whole window. When I, there's three little dots to the right okay. of, the, of the name. And instead of typing the name in there, I clicked on the three little dots. Right. And this window pops up. Okay? So now we're going to say, okay, let's make it Q6. All right? Well, now you know I really wanted five. So I'm going to go back down to five and hit okay. Now, if I come back over here and I look at my properties for this, You see it's now Q5. Data type Boolean, we're good to go. We're now good to use it in a program. Okay? So I'm going to close my inspector. Come back on the tabs, down at the bottom, click my navigator, and go back to my main. Okay? Your main is where your program is written. This is your main ladder diagram. Click on main, bring it up. All right. Now, what do you see that's missing out here? What's missing? Look at those. I said there were three pieces, right? Yeah, the reference addresses, okay. So let's do this. We're going to come up here. All right, we're going to come up to that top area up there where it says view and you select reference addresses. What's okay? that you just added? What's that? Did you just add one? I just added one, but it's not used yet. Okay. So it's not up there yet. We're going to show you what that looks like. Okay? But for right now, I want to view my reference addresses. Boom! There it is. Okay? So now the addresses are all up there so you can see where everything is at. Now, I want to come in here, and if the forward coil is energized, or the reverse coil is energized, then what's the motor doing? The motor's on, right? Yes. Okay? So if my forward coil is energized, or my reverse coil is energized. Okay. Now, keep in mind, every one of these internal relays, all these relays in here, have an unlimited number of contacts that you can go and pull and use. Okay? Remember the contacts we were doing in motor control? You had a three pole or a four pole motor. Yeah. If you needed more contacts, you had to add auxiliary contact blocks, right? Yes. Well, think of all of your relays being inside there with 128 auxiliary contact blocks. You think you can use that? Yep. Okay. So, what I'm going to do now is up here at the top. You see up there at the top, right on up there at the top, find my pointer, but right up here, right along here are a set of basic contact instructions. Okay? We've got our normally open contact, normally closed, a coil, okay? Then we have different types of coils over here. Different types of counter contacts, timers and everything in there. But for right now, you'll be using the normally open, normally closed, and the simple coil. Okay? So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and click on a normally open contact. And you can see my cursor change to a normally open contact. Yeah. 
You can see it changed to normally open contact. So I'm going to stick it. Put it right down here, new rung. You see a new rung developed? Yep. Okay. Now, as soon as I put it in there, I better name it so that I know what I'm talking about. Okay? And what did I say? Well, let's pull this. If forward coil is energized, right? So we're going to name this. Let's just come over here. F, W, D, C, O. There it is. It's all there for me, ready to go. Make sure that's in the screen here. Yep. There. And then once you get the variable you need, you hit enter and it's there. Okay? Now, I'm going to go up and I'm going to select another normally open contact. Okay? And I'm going to show you another way of putting the name to this. I clicked on the variables off to the right there. I'm sorry, to the left. Okay? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab reverse coil from my variable list and drag it and drop it onto those contacts. Done. Okay? You have a lot of different ways to work. If you know it off the top of your head, you can type it in there. If you don't remember what it is, you can drag it and drop it. Okay? So now I have those two to there. So I said if it's forward or reverse, that means we've got to wire those two together, don't we? Okay? So now what we do is we come up here and select this little perpendicular wire thing here. You go on up there to your top, select that little perpendicular wire, okay? There it is, horizontal vertical wire. Everybody see that? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Now it's going to automatically change for you between horizontal and vertical depending on where you put it. Okay? I'll show you what I mean. I've selected it. Now I come down here. And you see right now it's, ver it's horizontal? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And right there it's vertical, right? Yeah. Okay? So if I put it there. I just connected the wrong thing. Come down here. Connected those two together, right? Yeah. Now I come up here and I put a horizontal one. Now I can horizontal all the way over to the right here and stick a coil. Or I can come over here and grab a coil, bring it down and stick it on the end. I'm going to zoom out so you guys can see this, what happens here. Okay. Okay, I got everything in there on the screen. So I'm going to stick it right here at the end. It right justifies it automatically there, puts it for the on you on the end. Okay? Now what was that coil name? We already defined it. What was the name of that going to be? Motor on. Motor on. So I'm going to go up over here and grab motor on, take it, and drop it on there. I'm done. Okay? So what we just did is we just modified a forward reverse program to add two contacts that will turn on a light connected to Q5 whenever the motor's on. Okay? Now, you guys, okay, we're going to stop this for a moment.